Hi. Uh, in this video I would like to talk a little bit about the fundamentals of healing. Um, so first of all, before we get started, I would like to say a bit about how I view the whole process of healing. Um, because to my uh, uh, yeah, understanding, uh, people have a tendency. They have, a, just like they have a physical body, they also have an energetical body. And that energetical body is more or less suited to certain tasks. So, yeah, some people have long legs, they're good at running. Other people, they have a strong back, so they're good at lifting things. Um, and in the same way, the energetical body has yeah, its own constitution, its own abilities. So some people might find it easier to get into healing than other people, just like some people find it easier to go into channeling or um, yeah, uh, go into any other type of energetic activity. And uh, to me what defines the healer is that they have a relatively balanced energy body. So some people have an energy body which is very sensitive, which is very receptive. So they're very good at reading energies um, because everything impacts on them and they are unbalanced, influenced by this. But if this tendency is too strong, then spending a lot of time with people who are unbalanced or who have heavy or negative energies can be too heavy for you. So you can't yeah, stay a healer if you have a, too much sensitivity. On the other side, you have people whose energy body is very good at projecting energy. And this generally requires a strong willpower, uh, a strong personality. Um, but if this is too strong, then the person is just overbearing. He just imprints his own energy on everybody else, uh, forcing them into more or less yeah, his path or her path, and in a way just cloning uh, or propagating his own energy in other people. And this is great for a leader, but it is not great for a healer, because a healer should actually give back the person to him or herself. So a healer's energy body has a balance between the ability to manipulate energies and the ability to be sensitive to energies. But more importantly, a healer has a sense of harmony, a sense of balance. Um, because there are, of course, many different healing techniques, many books, many theories of how to heal. Uh, but ultimately, a person is a person. It is not some model out of a book. And if you try to squeeze people into your own model or system of what they should be like, that tends to not to work or, well, work out horribly. Uh, so you need to be sensitive to the person you're working with. What is it what he or she wants? Or what is it he or she is moving to? And their idea of health and balance can be very different from your own uh, yeah, system's health and balance. So you really need to be able to understand the person you're working with, to feel them, to feel how they are reacting, instead of just imposing blindly what you think is right upon them. Um, so if you do have the right yeah, energetic body and the right um, mindset to, uh, to be a healer, then of course there are loads and loads of different healing forms which are being offered right now. And um, it's important to realize more or less what is your own nature to find a form of healing which is suitable for you. But all forms of healing also have certain things in common. Um, because it doesn't matter what system of healing you use, there are only four techniques which you will be applying. Um, the first of them is moving energies. So often energies are imbalanced, left, right, front, back, up, down. Um, they get stuck in wrong parts of the body and by just moving this energy to the right place it can yeah, start flowing again. Uh, so the excesses are resolved, the shortages are, are met, um, so that the person feels healed, feels more balanced and can move on. The moving of energy is also the, the safest, because you don't lose any, any energy, your client doesn't lose any energy, it is their own energy which is just being moved to a different place. There's also very little risk of uh, negative side effects, because it is their own energy, so the person can 
easily control their own energy and they can easily move it around so even if you do things wrong usually in one or two days the person will recover and will be able to carry on as if nothing has happened. So moving of energies is generally the first technique which you should, should learn uh, to use. Well, then we come to the second technique which is already a whole lot more difficult and that is adding energies. Um, there are a lot of energies available to an, uh, to an energy worker. Um, if we uh, listen to the Vedas there are 1200 different energies available to us. So the energy body is made up out of 1200 different energies but not all of them are equally important. There are lots of individual differences on what is the uh, what are the major energies depending on the personality, their astrological uh, makeup, the food they eat, different energies will be more dominant or more in a following role. And it is very important